to pay this debt. When you contact them and say, "Excuse me, could you could you verify this debt? Can you can you uh, validate it? Could you send me proof of your claim?" If you can't, don't contact me again. And every time you do contact me trying to collect on this non-existent debt, I'm going to fine you five thousand dollars, and then I'm going to take I'm going to drag you into civil court, and I'm going to sue you, and I'm going to collect on it for harassing me and for committing mail fraud. Be an injury expressed. You cannot. You can't do anything. There is no such. There is no injury until you've expressed one, right? Okay. And you want to contact. Right. So if you want to be able to sue them for that, then you got to give them notice you're going to do that. Okay. Okay. And once so you give them like notice that. and they keep doing it, well, now you've got a claim. Okay. Because I'm not sure from the standpoint. I know from if uh, as far as if there's a certain dollar amount. Um, Per, per occurrence, I'm not sure, you know, within the U.S. code when it comes to mail fraud, I'm not sure, but is that something I would just have to read up on, but I'm just kind of thinking about that, though. So. Yeah, I, I tend to put my own value on things. Just try not to make it ridiculous. Okay. And uh, one other question in regards to uh, uh, being the administrator. Now, is, do you appoint yourself as the administrator, or is there some type of proof, like if someone asks you from the standpoint well, who appointed you as administrator? Okay. Is there well, some type of proof there? On the videos, I went through, uh, and that, that's all part of the understanding. People have to understand why and how okay. you become an administrator, right, and where you get this role of authority from. And that comes down to because it's you that created the legal person. You give it all the value. Without okay. you, there is no legal person, the, the birth certificate name. Right, you are what gives it value. Okay. If you give it value, then you're the one that calls the shots. That's equity. You're in the driver's seat. You're the king. Equity is king. My the legal person only has value because of me. That means that I I am the equity in the legal person. Therefore, I'm going to appoint the administrator. It's going to be me, because if it was a corporation. And I, I started a corporation, and I was the sole shareholder of that corporation. Then I'm going to vote myself in as the director, because I want to make sure the corporation is being run properly. So that's all in the videos. That's the fundamental concept I try to get people to understand why they're in the position of authority they're in. Until you understand that, you're not going to do anything. Okay. Hey, you have to watch the videos. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll do. We'll do. And Perfect. also join up it. over there at that freemanitoba.com and get okay. into the forum. There's a lot of good conversation going on. In that Starting forum. to, yeah, it's surprising. Yeah. I think when I joined, there was like maybe 12 members on that, or 20 or something. I can't oh. remember. Well, that's changed now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. I think that's fine. That's actually uh, that's all for me for right now. Thanks. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on. PA Free Woman. Go ahead, Gloria. Hi. Gloria. Hello. Gloria. (laughs) PA Free Woman. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. There There you are. Hi. Uh, uh, Okay, now the attorney is a debt collector, and I address that issue to court. But the judges are uh, ignoring it now. How do I enforce that? The, the, the judges, the, the lawyers of the collectors, therefore, this case is dismissed. Okay, uh, say say that again. The lawyers who are presenting credit cards or whatever, they are debt collectors, and they okay. try to the debt for themselves and their representative. And when I ask them to provide the contract that he is a representative for the bank, and he failed it. He, didn't, he did not submit a contract that he has to his provider, his uh, uh, client. So now he's claiming a fraudulent debt uh, enter into civil court, and I and I told the judge that he uh, defaulted it on my notice, and he did not uh, submit the, the contract that he holds with uh, the, his client, and he is a debt collector. He admitted that he's a debt collector. Okay. Now, now the court is completely ignoring it, that issue, because they have a long years of relationship. Now, how do I dismiss the case using that? Okay, uh, and, and so obviously you're the defendant and they're the plaintiff, right? 
Yeah. Okay, I don't think you attacked the core issue properly. Uh, it doesn't matter whether this guy is a collector for the bank or not, or whether he has authorization to, to, to collect or not. The matter before the court is that there's a debt and that you owe the debt. So okay. he doesn't care. everything else is pretty much irrelevant to that judge. He's going to think that that's just an irrelevant argument, and uh, probably rightly so. You and wanna... I, I did not do the administrative process, but I did uh, send the debt collector a letter, and uh, he he did not respond either. Yeah. So yeah. So but I I think you still want to go after the core issues, and you want to make sure that you're you're filing things in the court in affidavit form as well, because if you're not swearing it in the form of an affidavit. It has no standing, and he's not going to care about what you say. So if you swear out an affidavit that you served this guy with a document requesting a particular document and that he didn't produce it, and then you have those as exhibits attached to the affidavit along with a motion to, 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 to dismiss the charges against you or to throw the claim out, that's going to have standing. I see. Right? Okay. And it's, you, you want to have your, your court document in the form of an affidavit with the, the supporting documents as exhibits. Mm -hmm. Now that has standing. Now he can't ignore that. A judge cannot ignore an affidavit. He can ignore everything else you say. He can't ignore an affidavit. Now, uh, another question is, when you challenge the jurisdiction, and uh, you're basically saying that uh, this court doesn't have a jurisdiction because I am not that capital name. And I am a living her, you know, living woman. Yeah. Now the court completely ignores that. And rightly so, because I'm going to tell you right now that's wrong. You cannot do that. Number one, the courts cannot differentiate between the man and mm -hmm. the name, or the mm -hmm. woman and the name. They are one in the same in the eyes of the court, because right. courts can only deal with commerce. Period. Right. So the courts can't see a man. So that that's an invalid argument. Number one. They don't. They don't. They they don't take that seriously. They ignore it, and rightly so. The second point of that is, uh, hang on a second. I had this in my head. You cannot challenge the court's jurisdiction within the court. You can't mm -hmm. do that because the court cannot make a ruling on its own jurisdiction. No man can rule in his own cause. Mm -hmm. So you can't challenge the court's jurisdiction. What you can challenge is the jurisdiction of the party that brought you to court. That is something the judge can make a determination on because he's a higher level than that. He can make a ruling on whether or not the other party has the jurisdiction to even bring you to court, and that's based on contract law. If they didn't produce a contract, they have no jurisdiction to bring you there. Oh, I see. So you have to address that jurisdiction that the other party do not have. Of course, because your, your problem is the other party. They're claiming to have the jurisdiction to bring you there, meaning enforcing a contract. That's what jurisdiction is. Of course, the, of course that court has the jurisdiction to hear the matter. The problem is the other party didn't have the jurisdiction to bring you there. Now, when you're litigating in public, can you actually send a letter of a regulatory uh, and tell a judge that um, uh, I would, you know, the other party does not, is not a hold of due course, so therefore I would like to verify that through a administrative process and would you please excuse me and give me a 90 days uh, to do this, would they, uh, would they uh, give it to you? A, well, a letter rogatory is a letter that uh, is cross-jurisdictional. That would mm -hmm. be completely irrelevant to send a letter rogatory to a judge of a court that you're already in. Mm -hmm. Completely irrelevant. Um, now, how do you pull this case into private? Uh, okay, say that again? How do you pull this case into private? Well, that's private now. Now, now that that's the that's the whole point. I'm trying to teach everybody. They should be contacting the party that's coming against them privately between court sessions instead of doing everything in the public and get agreement with the other party before you go back to court. I have agreement with the other party that they don't have a contract. I have agreement with them that they're not the holder in due course because they can't produce the note. I have yeah, agreement with them that they have no jurisdiction. Now, what, what if you are already litigating in uh, in a public, and then you realize, oh, you have you you have a more benefit uh, as uh, a creditor. Now you want to do some administrative process, and you want to do some. Well, all you can do is you uh, you you could bring up with the court or the judge that you did that you just realized you haven't exhausted all your administrative remedies, 
So you want them to, 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 to recess or to dismiss until such time as you have. They may grant that to you, they may not. It doesn't matter though, because if you've got three, three weeks normally between hearings, you've got all the time in the world to do all your private remedy before the next hearing and then put that all into the court file in the form of an affidavit with your supporting documents that are done as that are add their exhibits to your affidavit then with a then a motion to uh to to dismiss the the, the claim a motion to strike the claim from the record because you have agreement that they don't have a claim uh, okay right so mm-hmm. that so you you can do that between court hearings that's why court hearings are not back to back every day they give you 3 or 4 weeks to do this uh, 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 while, while in between hearings, but we don't do it. And meanwhile, you enter a federal claim as a counterclaim. Well, you 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 don't want a counterclaim. Uh, you want to come at them as the plaintiff. You want to file a whole new claim altogether. But yeah, feel okay, free to okay. file a counterclaim. I I'm a big fan of that. If they've already paid the fee to take you to court, then file a counterclaim because I don't think it costs you any money. Or if it does, it's pretty minimal. But uh, yeah, please by, by all means file a counterclaim. Absolutely. You're right. If you can count a claim in federal court, you you don't have to pay the fee. Yeah, perfect. And right. technically speaking, you don't have you don't have standing unless you filed a counterclaim. But right. a counterclaim is your affidavit that you've contacted these people and they have not replied. They haven't produced the documents. You've been damaged by their actions, and the remedy is to toss this claim out. That so you- is a counterclaim. Right, so why are you litigating if you do a diminutive process and then you actually do counterclaim in federal court and then you actually show the default judgment? Yeah, yeah, clearly, yeah, they defaulted. They agreed with me that they don't have a claim. Right, okay. So the affidavit supporting that, along with the exhibits, the damages, they've damaged me because they're, they're uh, your counterclaim for damages, if you want to add a number to that for them bringing this frivolous claim into the court, and then the remedy is to throw it out and to pay the and, and for the other party to pay the fees. Right. Do you have to, in order to exhaust the remedy, uh, do you have to go through the appellant court and then you have to come No, no, back? no. Exhausting your remedy, you, you've, you've done everything that you can possibly do to, to, to handle, to, to settle the matter privately. That's exhausting your administrative remedies. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So I got to do the uh, the, the private uh, administrative process. Yeah, you you got a lot of work to do out of court and then bring it into the court. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank All right. You. Yep. All right, okay. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Anna 88 Bell again. Did you have a question? Oh. Can you hear me all right? Wait. Hear me yeah. all right? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, he mentions that... Um, that, that you can only go against individuals when you want to uh, uh, say the court has no jurisdiction. In all actuality, what Rod Class is doing then when he did all of his paperwork is he was saying the individual did not bring forth anything that was of a jurisdiction into the court. And he does that with a quorum novus. Are you familiar with that? I No, I, I don't think I know that term. Okay, if you get with Angela, and maybe you can get with Rod Class, see some of his paperwork and such, and she may have to have his home phone number that you can call him and talk to him. I think your your pay, your information would be of great use to him, and some of his information would be of use to you. Yeah, good swap. <laughs> okay, uh, the two of you can get together, and Angela have, but no doubt has his phone number. All right? Yeah, that sounds good to me. I'm all about information swaps. Okay. Be good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank for that. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along. Ali Mohammed. Ali Mohammed. Hi. Hi, Angela. How you doing? Hi. Fine. Thank you. How you doing, Dan? Not too bad. Yourself? I'm pretty good. Thank you. I uh, <clears throat> listened to your videos on my own. I actually discovered them, stumbled upon them, and they're pretty good. And uh, I just want to exalt you to keep doing doing what you're doing, um, it's like what I've said before on, on these calls, uh, one man, one knowledgeable person or one knowledgeable believer is worth a, is worth a thousand worshipers. So God Almighty bless you with this simple technique that you use, and I'm sure there's more to it than what I've already studied, but he's blessed you with this to help 
to enlighten people, to be a light for people. And I just encourage you to 